So I tried to draw a country's borders entirely from memory. The rules are simple. We'll spin the wheel and I have to draw the borders of whatever nation it lands on. And as a self-proclaimed geography expert, I can confidently say that the results were very shameful. All right, let's see which nation I'll be drawing first. All right, Belgium. You know what? I think I can do Belgium. I'm not sure where I want to start drawing the borders though. I think I should start with the coastline. Okay, so I know they have a very small coastline on the North Sea, but let's just pretend this is water. It's not my best wave, but just imagine that there's water there. Actually, I'm going to make that a different color so it doesn't conflict with the borders. All right, so we have the coastline up here. Next, I have to start drawing the border with the Netherlands. And since it's a European country, it's not going to be very straight. There's going to be some curves and edges to it. Yeah, okay, so far so good. I like what's going on here. All right, so we have the north and eastern borders drawn. Now all I need to do is finish off the border with France. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the Dutch, the Dutch, no, not Dutchness. I mean, I mean, this side is, this side is Dutch. This side isn't. What, what is Belgium? By the way, why is Belgium a country? Just split it up at this point. Like, honestly, I think it would just be a very good thing for the world if this side went to the Netherlands and this side went to France. Everyone here speaks French. Everyone here speaks Dutch. Like, I think Belgium is a great place, great food, and the Belgian people are great people. But low-key, Belgium's existence has kind of been a uh, net negative for the world. If you need proof, just ask anyone who lives in the Congo. They'll probably have a thing or two to say about a certain King Leopold. But that's not what really matters here. We're just drawing the borders. Okay, that's pretty accurate. You you gotta admit, that's pretty accurate. Look at that. Look at that. Like, that's, that's like spot on. I'm gonna take that one as a win. Okay, next, Nigeria. Okay, our first African nation. I think I have a pretty good idea of what Nigeria's borders look like. I think with most of these nations, I wanna start off with their coastline, because that's a pretty distinct feature. And then the borders kind of, I think, curve up around here near Cameroon. Like, when I'm thinking about the borders of a nation, I'm also kind of thinking about their neighbor's borders. I don't know why, but it's just kind of easier to think about the borders borders of the neighbor nations rather than the nation itself. Now we got the north part near Niger, and I think the rest is pretty much essentially just going to be a straight line. There we go. There we go. Look at that. And just for a little bit of fun, I want to try drawing the Niger River. There we go. That's my Nigeria. Okay, I think it's pretty good. That looks like Nigeria, but unfortunately my beautiful drawing of the Niger River doesn't actually match up all that well, but that's fine. We're not drawing rivers here. We're drawing borders. That was just for fun. A little bit of extra. Cuba, our first island. You know, whenever I see the shape of Cuba, I'm always reminded of like a like a snake. It has like the long tail shape and then it like curves off into like a little bit of a face. I know it also has some like barrier islands, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to draw some of those. And there's also another smaller island a little south of the main island of Cuba. I don't know what it's called, but I do know it's there. Let's just draw Florida as well because it's Florida. Let's just draw the keys as well. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're drawing Cuba here, not Florida. I'm gonna just screw with us out though. We're not drawing, we're not drawing Florida. We don't care about Florida. Okay, so this is my finished map of Cuba, minus Florida. All right, so the actual thing is, uh, it's a, it's a little longer than I expected. I think mine also might be a little too wide. That's a bit of a problem. You see, all I really need to do is just elongate it a little bit, and then it'll just be, be a perfect fit. Look at that, perfect fit. So yeah, if mine was a bit longer and had a little bit more of a curve in it, it'd be pretty perfect. Okay. Okay, come on. Who knows the shape of China? It's like 50 different islands. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my best shot. So for like every Pacific nation, there's like a main island. I'm gonna say the main island's uh, this. I'm gonna call it Tonga. This has to be where the name comes from, right? And if I was a small Pacific island nation, I'd also have a couple scattered atolls just scurrying around. A few cheeky little reefs. Something like this. Yeah, yeah. This looks nice. I'm really feeling the Tonga with this one. You know, these borders are kind of reminding me of the little eye floaties you have when you look around sometimes. That's basically their borders. Let me just put a little more effort. Let me just, let me just draw some waves. You know, just to just make it feel a little more Pacific. And why stop there? Let's spice up the islands a little. A few palm trees. Come on. This is given. This is Tonga. Oh yeah, this is Tonga all right. I can see this on like a, like a souvenir card already. If this isn't Tonga, I don't know what is. Uh, so uh, apparently this is. I'm just not going to be able to, to map this over. Let me, let me try. Let me try though. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's not happening. Let's just compare the main island. So the main island is 
is, just to put it lightly, it's, it's, it's not right. Or is it? Let me just do a little bit of manipulation here. So if I were to flip the island sideways, and then if I were to invert the entire planet, like such, manipulating the Earth's geography, forming it in such a way where it's a perfect match. Look at this. Let's zoom in. Let's get a clear shot of this. Come on, that is the main island of Tonga right there. It fits like a, like a shoe. That, that fits. You see, I got the borders right. I was just thinking of an alternate Earth. Common mistake. Sometimes my head is just in a, a different universe, right? You get what I'm saying. So I'm gonna give this one a Tonga out of 10. Next it's Kira Bass. Um, uh, <coughs> Oh, shoot. Uh, that's crazy. Kiribati just disappeared off the wheel. Wow. I'm sorry. I, I'm not drawing another random Pacific Island nation. I have no idea. Haiti! Haiti! I love Haiti. Alright, so Haiti's shape kind of looks like a like a claw. You know those gripper toys that you had as like a kid where it had like a long handle and at like the very end there was something that could like grab onto something? That's pretty much what Haiti looks like. Two long little, little noodle shapes at the end. Something like this. I know there's also an island somewhere though. I want to say the island's like here. You know, one of the the interesting things I learned about Haiti recently is that they actually used to own the entire island of Hispaniola. Sometime in the 18th century, they just conquered this side, which I, I, I didn't know about that. I think that was pretty cool. But of course, that doesn't matter. We're drawing modern Haiti here. All right, so overall, pretty close. Other than the fact that I put this island up here. Overall, though, pretty good job at Haiti. St. Lucia. All right, so you want to know what St. Lucia looks like? You're going to want to pay close attention because it's a real tough one. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. That's St. Lucia. That's the entire country. You see, that's the thing with a lot of these small Caribbean island nations. They're just very circular. They don't have like a super distinct shape. But I thought I'd give them the Tonga treatment and just draw a few palm trees. Palm trees are just like such a great tree. Who doesn't like a good palm tree? You know what? I'm gonna add something else as well. Let's add a few coconuts. I'm sure they have coconut trees in, in St. Lucia. And maybe a little little Mr. Krabs over here. Yeah, okay. There we go. Mr. Eugene Krabs, what are you doing over at St. Lucia? Ah, of course, it's because you left your lucky $1 bill on the island. I'm sorry, what are we doing again? All right, well, anyways, uh, next nation, Iceland. All right, we're just we're just getting a ton of islands. The great land of fire and ice. Iceland has like the most unique, not unique shape. The overall shape of the island is like pretty much just a circle. Not a circle, like, like an oval, pretty much. But like if you zoom into the coastline, it's like extremely intricate. Something like this. I think its most distinct feature is probably this little part that's jutting out over here. So I also just ended up drawing their flag as well because I just kind of felt like it. So the borders are pretty close, but I actually want to point out something else. Please, could you tell me how you pronounce this? If you guys ever visited the great city of Ejafeljagalakul, I have a lot of great memories from the, the very famous town of Grunderfjordur. And who could forget about the great sights that you can see at the peak of Mount Oreforjokul. Yeah, I kind of find it funny how the country with one of the simplest names in English, literally Ice Land, has some of the most, like, tough twistery names. Like, I know there's probably a good reason for all these cities being called this, but I will just never get over how ridiculously long they are. Okay, Georgia. All right, with this one, I'm actually gonna start with the eastern portion of the country. And it starts curving up a little, hugging along the Russian border. And then here down south, we have their border with Turkey. Yeah, okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's just finish the northern portion around here. Okay. And of course, we can't forget about their beautiful Black Sea coastline. And let's just connect it there to finish it off. There we have it. Georgia. You know, is it just me or does the projection of this map of Georgia seem a little off? You know what? It's probably just stretched a little. Let me fix that. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty close. I think my version might actually be a little more accurate because the map that I got off the internet seems like it's just using a really wonky projection. Oh, you know what? It's probably just the Mercator projection. That's probably why it looks off. Taiwan. It's another one of those more oval-shaped islands, but it does have a little bit of a unique twang to it. Pretty much the entire coast coastline is very straight and then it pretty much just wraps around and keeps going straight until it reaches the bottom of the island where there's a bit of a unique feature with a little bit of a jutting peninsula out into the sea something like this and let me just rotate this slightly because i think the angle is a bit off i'm gonna go with this okay it looks pretty close i think i was slightly exaggerating on the whole smoothness of their coastline it is a little more rough at parts but the overall shape is pretty similar 
similar. And so far, 2024 has been a pretty interesting year for the island, with them just recently having an election. I reckon that March 13th, 2027 will be an interesting day for the island. I personally wouldn't recommend being at the beach that day, though. A little birdie tells me that there's gonna be a big surprise. Next, Algeria. Let's just get the uninteresting, unique borders out of the way. Their coastline looks something like this. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to pull a 19th century British classic and draw some straight lines. Line here would do. Perhaps another right here. A few straight lines around here. A big straight line here. Yeah, okay, it's coming together. There we go. Now that's what I call some well thought out borders. Okay, so my version is uh, a little more on the chunkier side. I did kind of accidentally annex half of Morocco and uh, a good portion of Libya and Tunisia, but you know, that happens sometimes. All right, great, Argentina. Uh, of course, the country that had a suspicious uptick in its German population during the 1940s. Wonder what that was all about. But that's besides the point. Let's start with the northern half of the border. All right, their border with Paraguay is around here. Then we go south. Wait, no, we don't. We go north. They have a weird little antennae that just juts up into like Brazil and Paraguay. I know there's like a river that it falls, but it still just looks a little strange. So I'll keep going a little more south. Buenos Aires is like here and the coastline kind of twists a bit. And I'm kind of realizing now that I uh, low key made it like a little too close up. So to fix that, I'm just going to shrink this slightly. All right, let's continue. All right, it twists a little here and it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a, like a bumpy road. I feel like that's most coastlines, but like Argentina specifically is pretty bumpy, like specifically bumpy, not rough. And then it kind of curves off here in the tip of South America. But I know they have like a strange border with Chile here. So, so then their border with Chile pretty much just defines the rest of their outline. And it should look something like this. All right, it's decent. It's decent. I was kind of intending for this to be this, but it ended up actually being a little more north than I expected. Also, the entire country is a bit more tilted than I thought. So mine is kind of close, but it's still pretty rough. If you know what Argentina looks like, you could probably gather that it's maybe Argentina. Okay, South Korea. I'll start off with their border with the north, and I believe their eastern coastline is relatively smooth. Not smooth, but like smooth for coastline standards. And I know the country's southern coastline is pretty interesting because of how intricate it is. I know there's a ton of islets and bays nestled into places, and then it kind of ends up looking something like this. I feel like this one's probably a little inaccurate. I'm not really feeling this one right now. We'll see though. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just like not right. I think I got a little too focused on like the intricacies of the southern coastline that I ended up uh, exaggerating it slightly, ever so slightly. Like it kind of looks like South Korea, just if South Korea was a metaphorical Pepsi can that I crushed and threw in the garbage, then I'd say mine is probably pretty accurate. But honestly, I think my version's probably fine because their flag is pretty much the Pepsi logo anyways. So their borders kind of looking like a soda can is pretty on brand. Next is Chile. Okay, since we just at Argentina, this one shouldn't be so bad. I'm gonna try to get some of these smaller details on this one though. I know the northern half of the coastline is not too intricate, but then once you get around here, it kind of curves up a bit. Something like that. There's like a bit of like a bay here. And then once you get to the southern part, the coastline gets really wonky. There's like a lot of fjords in the southern half. Then you got their border with Argentina here. I mean, I mean the, the entire border is pretty much of Argentina, but like this part specifically is like a straight line with Argentina. And then for the rest of it, you just pretty much go up. Okay, Chile's looking a little too thick, so let's fix that. All right, that looks good. So I think the details between mine and the real one are relatively similar, but the positioning is a little off. The real thing Loki has like a like a Michael Jackson link going on, but all that really means to me is that my version of Chile just has some good posture. And now it's Denmark. Okay, so the question is, should I draw them with or without Greenland? You know what? I'm gonna draw both. I'll begin with mainland Denmark on this side. Denmark has always had just such a interesting shape. To me, it's always kind of looked like a candlestick, but I also hear a lot of people that say this peninsula kind of looks like a person, which I do low-key see. I'm also not really sure how many islands that are over here. I know there's at least like three main ones. Okay, that's the mainland done. Now for Greenland. To me, Greenland's like the epitome of an intricate coastline. Like there's pretty much not a single part of Greenland's coastline that is like smooth. It always 
has some type of fjord or inlet or something like that. Okay, it kind of looks like... No, it doesn't. It does not look like that. Yeah, this is pretty much the best I got. Let's just see what it looks like. Okay, starting with Denmark, I think mine's relatively close. Also, the more I'm looking at it, the more I am seeing the person. And by a person, I mean specifically Batman. This is the head. Here's his little bat ears pointing out. This is like his hands. Who knew that Batman isn't actually from Gotham? He's from Denmark. Now for... Greenland. Yeah, it's looking looking a bit rough. That's a pretty mild way to put it. Unlike my version, there's just nothing here. This is just ocean. I also missed a few important details like this massive fjord over here. And I kind of just low-key gave up on the western coast, not gonna lie. So overall, is Denmark recognizable? Maybe. It depends. It's kind of recognizable. But uh, Greenland is most definitely not. No one is figuring out that this is Greenland. So that's like a 50-50. Like a so now I think I'm I'm just gonna cut my losses and stop while I'm only slightly behind. I think I did fairly all right. There were some misses, but I think overall I did a pretty decent job. Definitely could have been better, but most of them were at least somewhat recognizable. But let me know what you think though. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, feel free to leave a like and let me know in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you then.